Hey everyone, welcome to this week's garden update and it's just starting to pour down again. It's actually very humid out here as well, so not the best conditions to be out pottering around the garden. But definitely I want to go and show you right now and take a look at how everything has changed so much even in the last seven days. Let's start off in the cut flower garden. Look at all those sunflowers. I've got four different varieties growing here in this two by two meter little patch. This one is called Solar Flash. And the one thing to mention about all of the sunflowers I have growing in this spot is that they are multi-stemmed, which means they put out multiple blooms. It's getting quite windy here. These ones are called Evening Sun. And in fact, this is the tallest plant in this patch. It's almost about two meters in height. And then it kind of staggers down with the solar flash, which I just showed you. That's not a great example. Maybe this one here. And then over here, got this really nice, almost a bit more traditional looking, what most people would recognize as a sunflower um, growing here. But you know what? I cannot remember its name. This one here is the last to open. Not too long, I reckon, a few days. It's called Prado Red and there's multiple buds on it all along the stem. I just picked a few of them to bring inside but this one is already starting to lose its petals so I might go and grab another one in a minute. If you want your sunflowers to last longer in the vase and not be losing its petals like that one just did even before I brought it inside it's a really good idea to pick them just as they start to open up. I'll see if I can find a good example. You can see on this one here, some of the petals have yet to open up. This bloom is very fresh. The petals that have opened are still quite secure in place. They don't easily fall off when I touch them. Bringing this inside, popping it in some water, it will continue to open up and it will just give you a longer display indoors and they should last in a vase for at least a week maybe a little bit more when you pick them at that stage however the ones the bunch that I just picked today they probably won't be around for more than maybe three or four days and they'll just start dropping petals like crazy but you know that's all right it doesn't bother me because I can always just come out and grab some more but if I was giving a bunch away as a gift I tend to go and pick the ones that are still yet to fully open here's my second tip that I'd like to share with you when growing sunflowers in your garden if you want to have them continuously during summer, it's a really good idea to succession sow. Because in my experience, these flowers are not very long lasting. So although it's looking lovely at the moment and all the buds are opening, they will all have dropped their petals and started to set seed. So to get more of these, you do this. Every couple of weeks, sow a few more seeds. These ones are called Lemon Striker. I actually have a few of these flowering at the moment over in the raised beds. I'll show you that in a sec. I'll just quickly go and pop all of these inside. I'm over here in the raised garden bed area to show you those Lemon Striker sunflowers which I had just mentioned. Since we're over here, I do want to show you something else. So you know how excited I was getting about these button squash that are growing down here. Well, I've been checking them every day and they looked fine yesterday when I came here this morning. Look what I found. It had dropped off and it looks like something has been at it. And my best guess is, I know it's gross, but I reckon that was a rat. We were warned by the experts here in New South Wales that there could be a really big issue with rodents like rats and mice as well. And this is because about halfway through last year, there was a mice plague, which went rampant on the poor farmers eating all of their crops, which is absolutely devastating. So of course, I mean, I don't care that much. It's just my garden here. Like that's their livelihood. But anyway, the experts did warn that, you know, over winter, if we have a mild winter, which we did, the population once spring arrives could explode. And I have a feeling that has happened here because I do have to say, oh, the other day when I was, or the other evening when I was locking the chickens up, 
and I was heading back inside I noticed at the bottom of the steps there was a rat so um yeah I'm gonna have to try and um deal with that issue I'm not really sure how but you know I certainly don't want rats eating foods that I put so much time and effort into growing there's a little spot just around there that I'm really excited to see what comes out of it this year because I have let a few plants which have self-seeded like this one here just take off and I've got absolutely no idea what it's going to produce. My best guess is it will be some kind of pumpkin or squash but so far there are no flowers on it or any kind of indication to give me a clue of what to expect but that's what I love about gardening you know it's it's exciting and there's mystery sometimes and I can't wait to share with you what's going to come from this and then also just across the way in this bed the jewel garden I actually did a big load of deadheading over here on these white lights cosmos this morning down here there was another plant that I just let go. It was a bit of a mystery, but I think I figured out what this is because there are a lot of flowers on it and there seems to be some fruit setting. Let me see if I can find some. Here we go. There, look at that. There's loads of these on the plant. To me, this looks like it's going to be a West Indian gherkin. gherkin. <laughs> I've just taken a step back and shown you this area from a different angle. So that's the mystery, mystery squash or pumpkin. Then over there beside the blue salvias, that's where the West Indian gherkin plant is. And then across the way over here, I have a couple of cucumbers and another squash. It's a crookneck squash. A Lebanese cucumber which isn't looking great but I'm not too concerned because I have a few of these planted around the garden and then over here I absolutely love growing these I know I'm just showing you like little baby plants and foliage but these are Armenian striped cucumbers and I have two plants here I really need to dig one of them up what I also need to do is come in here and lay down some cardboard because it's just going to get really tricky once these plants start to grow and they will eventually start to come out here. It will be really hard to keep the grass short so I reckon with the cardboard it'll be a lot more manageable. Put down a layer of cardboard and then some mulch. Before we go on any more I do have a little bit of sad news to share with you. So just giving you a little heads up before I tell you now. Um, so one of our chickens, Sparkles, unfortunately passed away. I'm not sure what happened. Um, I just came out to the coop and found her there. Um, so it was quite upsetting at the time. It still is, but the way I look at it is she had a lovely, long, happy life, free ranging around the garden. Um, so yeah, I don't know what else really to say about it, um, but I did want to let you know what's happened. And in case you're wondering, the other three remaining chickens, so the black one called Rainbow, the white one there is called Snowflake. And the other one, she's probably in the coop autumn. They are all doing really well. I feel like they were a little bit lost at first losing their friend, but after a few days, they seem to have um, perked up a bit. And as far as health is concerned, they haven't shown any signs of being sick. And that is probably why my best guess is that poor little Sparkles died of old age. I'm now heading over to where I've got the two raised garden beds and archway that I put in last week and I actually managed to get it finished. But I did want to show you this view as well. Look at it, all the barrage, more dahlias, Verbena bonariensis, some beautiful salvias, and of course the mulberry tree. How amazing, look at everything. It's just come back to life. I'm now over where I installed the two new raised garden beds with the archway, 
This one is actually full of small warted gourds. I put in four plants here. They are a little bit tightly packed together, but I'm hoping these two at the back may just like kind of sprawl out this way onto the grass, which I'm gonna soon cover up like I'd mentioned in that other spot. And then in this patch here, I have a whole load of corn. They cross in this bed, I have a marrow. There's actually two there, I will take one out. They're way too close together. Down here is a little gem squash. This is a Jack B little pumpkin. And then over on the far side, I have a golden midget watermelon. I ended up not putting any beans into these two beds, but there's plenty of other stuff growing in there that will fill out the space very soon. Just over from them is the new dahlia patch. And you can see there are a couple more which have opened during the week. There's this gorgeous one, which I believe is called Juliet. Remember, I did lose a lot of the labels during that really bad storm that we got, but as far as I can make out, it is that dahlia. It has this light yellow center fading off to this kind of dusty pink. The one down here looks like it's going to be a dinner plate dahlia. Oh no, 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 no. Did oh, I cannot believe it. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so annoyed with myself. <laughs> so it's about five minutes later and I've calmed down. I'm back to normal. I was a bit shocked when I just snapped this off. So this beautiful flower or dahlia is called Samoan Prince. If taken care of really well, so you know, you make sure the soil is nice and healthy, you water it well, and even give it the occasional liquid feed, these flowers can reach up to 30 centimeters across. It was the color on these petals that drew me to purchasing this tuber. You can see it's a combination of cream and pink with these beautiful burgundy stripes. This is another beautiful dinner plate dahlia called tartan, tartan. It's got this really nice striped foliage. So hopefully now by next week, if I don't snap this one off too, I'll be able to show it to you. The final little dahlia update I want to give you today is over here where I have a lot of kind of orange, apricot and light pink colored flowers. But this one here in particular called golden leader is looking beautiful and it's really benefiting from having the cage wrapped around it it's so much nicer than last year last year i had these plants kind of falling over collapsing on the ground by this stage and these cages which i made are really doing the trick they're definitely holding these plants up and making the display a lot more beautiful Speaking of beautiful things, I've been really looking forward to showing you this, which is a lovely handmade gift given to me by two of our garden friends who tune in every Friday. They are Angela and Lily May. Thank you, you two. Oh, I was so happy to receive such a beautiful parcel that I know you put so much time and effort into. And now my family and I will get to enjoy it for hours and hours in our house. So this gift is called Stove Top Potpourri and they even included this little label with some simple instructions on how to use it. You can see here there's multiple individual little bags and look at this detail, a little strip of material wrapped with some twine. Very, very nice. It's full of these homemade dried oranges a lovely cinnamon stick, star anise and clovers. And when you heat this up on the, st on the stove, it really fills the kitchen up. It's, it's just so relaxing, the scent of it when it wafts around the house. I'm really, really grateful for this. Thank you so much, Angela and Lily May. I figured out where I'm going to put most of the seedlings and baby plants which have been sitting here for probably much longer than they should be. <laughs> I'm thinking of putting most of them over here, which actually is a really long garden bed that's just been neglected. This is just mostly grass and other little weeds that have taken over. I have over the last few days been clearing out this spot. That's why it's looking a bit better. 
and you may remember during winter and spring this was the area where I was getting all the mushroom compost delivered so there still is quite a lot there that I can spread out a bit more the soil is really really good here so I reckon anything I put in this spot will take off within a matter of about two weeks so I'm hoping if I put it out there to the universe aka all of you who watch every Friday I'm hoping by next week I will have this cleared up and planted out. Watch the space. I've come under the shelter because it is pouring down again. So I think that's probably all I'll be able to squeeze into this week's update. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I'll see you again next Friday.